The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most. Kelly Degnan, a career member of the Senior Foreign Service with the rank of Minister Counselor. She arrived in Tbilisi on January 29, 2020 to serve as U.S. Ambassador to Georgia. During her almost 30-year career, Ambassador Degnan has focused on political and political military affairs. She was the Deputy Chief of Mission and Charged Affairs at Interim in Rome and Pristina and also served overseas at the U.S. Embassies in Botswana, Pakistan and Turkey. Ambassador Degnan was the senior civilian representative to Brigade Combat Team Salerno in Khost, Afghanistan, where she earned the Secretary of State's Expeditionary Service Award, one of many awards she has received throughout her career. Ambassador Degnan was also the political advisor to the four-star commander of U.S. Naval Forces Europe and U.S. Naval Forces Africa and the political counselor at the U.S. mission to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. In Washington, D.C., Ambassador Degnan served as the Deputy Executive Secretary of the Department of State under Secretary John Kerry as a Special Assistant to Secretary Albright and as a Special Assistant to three Under Secretaries for Political Affairs, Mark Grossman, William Burns and Nicholas Burns. Ambassador Degnan is from California. She earned a degree in journalism from Northwestern University Medical School of Journalism and a law degree from the University of Southern California Law Center. Before joining the Foreign Service, she worked as both a journalist and a lawyer. As an attorney, she served as legal counsel in the Federated States of Micronesia and the Republic of Palo while navigating the Pacific on her sailboat. She speaks Italian and French, has studied Turkish and Urdu, and is learning basic Georgian. The checkpoint sat down with Her Excellency Kelly Degnan prior to her departure from Georgia since her term expires soon. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, first of all, thank you that uh, I think we cannot say that it's been a while while we met Ambassador <laughs> Degnan because just Saturday, uh, Power of No, organized by Forbes Woman Edition, Thank you so much for attending. Great. Every, everybody was so much happy and sharing all these stories. How important is to have such networking, Madam Ambassador, in our country, sharing such values and uh, organize such uh, events? Well, thank you first for, for inviting me today for uh, this chat. Um, I thought that was a wonderful program on Saturday. There was such positive energy uh, there but also that sharing of experience um, that I think is a motivating factor for a lot of people at whatever stage of your career you're at, to hear that, um, that others are, how others are dealing with setbacks, turning them into um, positive uh, motivation to keep moving forward. I, as I said, I think it's the power of turning a no into a yes for your own personal path or sometimes for a business deal or whatever. Um, and I think it's important uh, to network not only within the country, but also internationally. And that's what I think Forbes and others are able to do is to build these networks worldwide that are so important. Uh, my, my, my one hope is that each time these will become more um, mixed, so that there are men and women coming to these conferences. Uh, sometimes it's important for women to discuss the challenges that they face, but I think right now we're, we're at a, a stage where it's really important for men to understand how, uh, how much they benefit from having um, mixed gender boards of directors or uh, management that is a better reflection of gender um, diversity. So I. I think that will make the conversation next year even richer, is to have the input from, um, from all the citizens of Georgia who are facing some of these same challenges. Exactly. Hopefully next time they will buy tickets. <laughs> Men will also buy tickets. My, my <laughs> suggestion was for every now. woman to bring, to bring. Yes, a man. Yes, I remember um, that. And I think that uh, that's a nice way to, to do it because then it's, it's, um, it's friends who are helping friends. Exactly. Thank you so much. Um, uh, probably I will uh, I will proceed with one big uh, 
power of no that was translated <laughs> into yes. And that was uh, um, you know, Georgian citizens taking streets in a rally against the so-called uh, law on agents and Russian law, as, as we um, as we call it. That day, you said it was a dark day for Georgia's democracy. Uh, not a typical phrase coming from from a diplomat, from at least <laughs> what um, what I could say. Why did you decide that it was time to be? clear on what was going on uh, with that law in Georgia. When we look at the impact of the same, of a similar law in Russia, what we see is the devastating effect it had on civil society. The organizations in Russia that are designed to, to help a wide variety, um, not just building democracy or strengthening institutions, but um, strengthening media, strengthening um, uh, opportunities for minorities. Uh, all of these organizations, for the most part, have had to either shut down or leave, leave Russia because of the impact of the same kind of law that uh, was under consideration here. Uh, and I think that woke everybody up to the risk that this presented to Georgia's civil society. I've had the privilege of traveling around this country and meeting with many, many NGOs. And these are Georgian citizens who are working very hard to improve their own communities. To um, in, Sometimes it's benefits for the families of, of people with disabilities or uh, young people who are looking for opportunities that will open doors for them in the future. Um, it can be uh, agricultural cooperatives and uh, farmers associations that are uh, bringing together different sectors of the economy to make sure that they, um, that they can weather crises or that they can diversify their markets. I mean, these are all extremely important to Georgia's society and to its development and to its strength. To have those organizations put at risk by a Kremlin-inspired law that, uh, as far as we could tell, was, was serving no purpose, um, was, I think, of great concern to the United States, but also to, um, to Georgians themselves. And we saw that when over 100,000 Georgians came out onto the streets in uh, Tbilisi, Batumi, Kutaisi, Akhalsike to say, we don't want this. We want Europe. We want a European f future where our freedoms and our democracy is protected. That was a very strong message. That was a brilliant day for Georgia. <laughs> yes, that, that was no turned into yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yes, um, but some said that this was also um, uh, an example of polarization. So I would like to use this opportunity with you, Madam Ambassador, to um, clear up some notions that we see in, uh, um, in these 12 uh, points. What does depolarization mean? Because when you understand um, notions, then, then you know how, how to act, right? So I think it is important to to define depolarization. What does that mean? Well, I think that's a good point. And it's depolarization is, is something that many countries are, are facing right now um, in different ways. Every citizen has a, 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 an opportunity to contribute to depolar depolarizing this situation, to, to unifying the country. Um, and I, I think the media as well can play a very important role by ensuring that the coverage of news is accurate and balanced. And I think in Georgia that has become difficult for, for the Georgian citizens to find accurate, balanced reporting of the news. Um, this creates confusion, this creates division, and the only one, as we've said many times, who benefits from this is Russia. Russia wants a weak, divided Georgia. And uh, you've seen that over the centuries, how that is then used against Georgia to distract Georgia from important priorities, but mostly to distract Georgia from the strength that comes from unity. It's ala I mean, it's right there in your, mo in your motto. 
Um, and I do think that Russia, that Georgia has a clear roadmap as a result of these um, 12 priorities, but even beyond that, as a result of the clear choice of the Georgian people for a European future. That's the roadmap. That's the roadmap. And every step along that way involves strengthening Georgia's democratic institutions, strengthening its economy, strengthening its security so that people feel a sense of security, um, and, and bringing people together around this common cause of a European future. Maybe another reason why uh, our internal or external uh, enemies are using effectively all, all kind of tools against this society is its own economic development. I'm, I'm talking about the country itself. We still, uh, we still uh, could not reach the milestone of becoming richer country. And uh, yeah, I do understand where business media uh, economy and business is driven by more and more, but we also want some more at the same time. But uh, still Georgia is poor. How crucially important is further economic development? And uh, could you identify during your ambassadorship all those programs which were implemented? Uh, I'm also talking about 30-year anniversary, what USAID is doing uh, I mean, this fabulous team for this country. Well, Nabij Nabij, I think it's very important not to forget how far Georgia has come in 30 years. Uh, and it's quite impressive progress that uh, Georgia has made through the very hard work of uh, Georgian citizens to build uh, that economy, to uh, build a better standard of living for the people. Now, uh, clearly, I agree there's, um, there's much more to do, and I feel a real commitment to that progress. Um, and that is certainly what the United States has been trying to support Georgia on this path to um, strong, better security, better, um, stronger economy, and stronger democracy. We're convinced that that is what is the formula for Georgia's success, for Georgia's stability, um, and ultimately for raising the standard of living for, for Georgians across the board. Um, we have been fortunate to partner with, uh, the, with the government and um, uh, private sector uh, and civil society on a number of important um, projects. I think just Monday I was um, at the launch of Skills Week, which is something that the U.S. has partnered with uh, Georgian government on to help ensure that um, students coming into the workforce have the right skills that industry needs so that they can come into good, high-paying jobs that will lead to a rewarding career. Um, what we want to see is, is exactly what you said, you know, an, a continuing increase in the standard of living for Georgians, the ability to um, provide uh, for their families and to have rewarding careers. Um, starting even with the um, support to the Ministry of Education and Basic Education, developing critical thinking skills, developing um, English language skills, skills that will open doors to new opportunities for Georgians in the workplace, whether it's vocational education or university level um, graduate uh, education, more research and development, introducing and strengthening these components um, to the education sector that then lead to better jobs and a higher standard of living. Um, so I, I know, I mean, I feel very um, optimistic about the economic future here. We've seen a very um, strong economic performance uh, over the last two years. Uh, granted, some of that is the result of higher remittances, um, some of it's the money flow as a result of Russia's uh, attacks against Ukraine. But some of it is the result of very good fiscal and monetary management by the National Bank, and by the Ministry of Finance, by the Ministry of Economy. Um, and I think that kind of uh, good um, management of Georgia's economy will be very important going forward. Um, 
We've also seen organizations like the American Chamber of Commerce that have been excellent um, partners in developing a positive business environment here in Georgia. Um, and again, that is an aspect of civil society that is contributing in important ways to Georgia's stability and economic growth. Uh, but, 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 do you also uh, see what you just uh, mentioned in the context of the economy, um, the risk of it becoming, again, over the uh, um, because that's um, one of the risks, uh, one of the challenges that I have in the and officials that say that right now one of the main goals for Georgia uh, is um, unfortunately war, and one of the main spillover effects of Georgia is not to become a I agree with you. That would be a major setback. Georgia has uh, invested a lot of effort in diversifying markets and finding new markets for Georgian products um, where they uh, um, can sometimes sell at a higher price, uh, their, their products. Um, but m most important is reducing that dependence on Russia. Now, you're never going to uh, eliminate that. No one's suggesting that. It's been a tra an important trade partner. But Georgia has seen throughout its history that Russia can use that dependence as leverage uh, to control um, or, or retaliate against Georgia. And what we saw in previous years is real success that Georgia was having in diversifying its mar markets, finding um, really quite um, stable and profitable new markets that um, I, I think in 2022, the dependence on Russia had dropped by 66%. So that was, that's quite significant. Um, it, it's, uh, it takes focus and concentration to continue that momentum to find new markets. But it is 100% in Georgia's interest to reduce its dependence on Russia for agriculture, for energy, for um, some of the sectors that uh, maybe it's been easier to go to Russia. But it's not the only choice. And I, I think the effort needs to continue to diversify away from um, Russia to give Georgia more flexibility and not be hostage to Russia's uh, retaliation through trade. Reach new markets. We have a new hashtag with joint campaign together with USAID, so mm -hmm. we will launch it quite soon. Reach new markets. So that's, that's great. That's, great. That's, that's, how, that's great. that's how we can move forward. As Madame Ambassador mentioned, nobody can eliminate our geographical situation right today, so of course Russia will, will be exist. there. Um, <clears throat> but uh, um, I, I remember once uh, Kaka Bendukidze said, well, uh, you know, one? maybe uh, one day uh, you will not uh, start uh, thinking that uh, in the north there is Russia. Maybe you will think there is a big blue sea. sea. So uh, maybe. Maybe that's uh, one way of not to think about uh, Russia. Um, uh, how could um, candidate country status help us in what we have been discussing right now? Um, because I had this interview with Mr. Venkataraman, and um, he said um, he said a very brilliant uh, phrase. He said, um, you know, uh, start um, taking real steps towards uh, 12 points, and you will see American business uh, interest growing towards Georgia. Do you see this direct link there, Madam Ambassador? Absolutely, absolutely. The 12 points, uh, the association agreement, all of these are, as I said, a clear roadmap for Georgia. Follow those steps and Georgia will be opening up to so many more opportunities. It's like the seal of approval. If you're on that way, people say, okay, they've got, they're, they're committed to a transparent judiciary that offers real rule of law. They're committed to a level business playing field. They're committed to democracy. They're committed to uh, the freedoms that are, are required to have a, a truly predictable and functioning and flourishing economy. So it's, it's like a shorthand for saying Georgia is on the right track. 
What I think is important for the Georgian people is to understand what it will bring to them, how European Union, th this path that, that Georgia is on toward a European future will improve their quality of life. It's, uh, it's not just the, um, the programs that, they will be, that Georgia will become eligible for through the European Union, it's the connections with Europe and Europeans. You've seen that over the centuries because Georgia has always been facing toward Europe always had the ties to Europe um, and that has been a source of uh, not just business development but educational exchange, science and research uh, exchanges. Um, that needs to just become a smaller and smaller world so that Georgia is even more fully integrated into Europe. As we see in other countries that have um, joined the European Union or on that path, um, it, they, they're, they're more stable, their uh, GDP goes up, they're more prosperous. For, for the average citizen, there are these kinds of benefits, education, um, security, economy, all the things that Georgia is, is striving for and has been working for over the, the years comes with that closer connection to the European Union and NATO on the security side as well. It's almost a year and a half, uh, world after the crazy pandemic uh, situation is facing uh, another pandemic called war in Ukraine, which is uh, unfortunately to everybody, mostly Ukraine, is uh, rather disastrous, the pandemic itself. But I'm ambassador. Since then, whole world is facing uh, another economic uh, relations uh, which is uh, quite appropriate during previous periods called sanctions. Sanctions, uh, sanctions against uh, Russia, sanctions because of war. At the same time we all know that uh, it's a quite difficult issue to implement. And uh, to be more precise, at the same time, what I'm trying to follow, including uh, Ambassador James O'Brien, I mean, everybody who is involved in this, and at the same time, me, myself, as a citizen of Georgia, I do realize that we are one among those countries which are bordered with Russia, which will always m might have some suspicions. I don't know how to say it. At the same time, you were always precise in your comments within these previous months about the coordination with Ministry of Finance and its agencies, about your coordination with Prosecutor Office and Ministry of Interior. I do remember all these comments. How Georgia should proceed, in, how Georgia should proceed in this very vulnerable, volatility, full of volatilities, full of suspicious period when I don't know, somebody m might say that Georgi and Elena are trading with Georgian Coca-Cola <laughs> in Russia no. or something like that. Yeah, well, no, but actually, uh, is there is a, some sort of recipe for this already established? How countries which are bordered with Russia, with a small part, but still bordered with Russia, and we do have such regions as Abkhazia and South Ossetia, so there are a lot of problems. What's your opinion in this regard? This is where the long partnership that the United States has had with Georgia, I think, really comes into play. Because we've been working with the Customs and Revenue Services, we've been working with the Coast Guard, we've been working with the, most of the government agencies uh, in Georgia for years and years on training, on providing modern equipment um, to help Georgia know what is coming in mm -hmm. and going out across your borders. Um, this is for Georgia's security. And now we have the even larger issue of uh, trying to stop Russia's war machine, which is how the war continues. I mean, it's a crucial element of stopping Russia's war against Ukraine to, um, to prevent Russia from being able to uh, resupply its, um, its military. And, um, we, we see that 
we see how they are using everyday items like cell phones or washing machines to get the components that uh, to evade sanctions so they can get the components they need for missiles that are then being used to blow up schools and hospitals and apartment buildings. So it's really crucial. This is lives at stake. Um, and we are very grateful for the uh, close cooperation that we've had with the Georgian authorities on this because they understand too what is at stake. Ukrainian safety, Ukrainian lives, but also Georgia in terms of the, the threat that you've lived with um, since 2008 and before with Russia having invaded your country and tried to take your sovereignty and your identity away from you. Uh, so I think there's a, 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 a real conviction among the Georgian authorities that we work with that Georgia does not want to be part of the, um, you know, the process of allowing Russia to continue this war against Ukraine. It's quite complicated, though, as you point out, um, and all what it means that we need even tighter coordination, better communication, so that we have a good picture, on, you know, uh, region-wide, on on what's coming in and out and how uh, Russia is evading this, the export controls and sanctions. So I think we will continue to see that close coordination. Just last week in Batumi, um, we, we had a, an equipment donation to the Customs Service. We also just uh, launched the Maritime Single Window Program. Again, this will improve the efficiency of Georgia's ports, port operators, customs and revenues to know what is coming in and out to, tr to be able to track containers as they come in and out. All of this is real and progress. And this coordination goes on. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah, thank the latest you. Thank rumor, you. you know what it is? The latest rumor about Georgia. What? We're repairing in Georgia, in Tbilisi, uh, that this territory is on the government of territory, that so there are some, there's a plot of land which is repairing when our ambassador aviation small parts, TAM management called the company, which is repairing all Soviet, uh, and all this done is together with Ukraine. So this is in support of Ukraine? Yeah, correct. See, there are many ways that, you, that Georgia has been trying to... But at the same time, there was a rumor that we're repairing for Russia. Well, I hope that's not the case. No, it's and not. You mentioned the communication, um, right? And better communication is something that we always seek from the uh, from the government uh, officials. Um, it, sometimes I have uh, cognitive dissonance because uh, on the on the one hand I hear the rhetoric. Uh, that, for example, West wants to uh, wants a war in the country, and then on the on the other hand, I see um, how the government is working on the project of Black Sea Cable, for example, uh, which is which will be a joint uh, effort and joint initiative of, of Georgia and, and EU. The same goes with with the U.S. in many cases, and we've seen uh, some of the examples, including Anaclia and uh, city which was uh, uh, which you called uh, missed opportunity once and I remember that that phrase uh, um, also maybe that's that's the problem on the one hand saying that uh, we don't know whether we are connected with uh, international sanctions or not and on the other hand trying to not to evade the, these, these sanctions a cognitive dissonance is the perfect term because that is exactly what this propaganda that is bombarding Georgia is trying to create. Confusion, um, a, a, a sense of, uh, of distraction so that citizens here don't know w what the truth is and find it hard to uh, sort out all the different rumors and disinformation that is flooding the society here. I know this is something that um, Georgians are used to from Russia for a long, long time, but it does seem to be particularly intense right now because, uh, you know, obviously Russia wants to keep, as I said, wants to keep Russia, uh, Georgia weak and divided and distracted and fighting amongst yourselves. And uh, it's, it's why I put such an emphasis on the role of the media to 
um, provide that balanced, uh, accurate information that the people desperately need and want. Um, you find uh, people looking elsewhere for information, but um, again, I think what, what needs to come through is, is a clear understanding for the society about what their country is doing, the role that Georgia is playing. Everyone understands the unique position that Georgia is in because Russia occupies 20% of your territory, because Russia pressures Georgia all the time to keep a sense of um, a fear, really, and confusion. Uh, so no one is, is expecting Georgia to do more than um, this country is comfortable doing when you're, you're in a difficult um, situation. And what Georgia is doing is, again, greatly appreciated. So I think the continued effort on helping citizens sort out the truth from all of this propaganda that is just relentlessly uh, coming at them is the key. And, and the, probably the last question, one advice you would... You uh, you would yes, of course. <laughs> Let us not fight. <laughs> uh, but w uh, one advice that you would, uh, you would derive uh, from the very, let me say, uh, um, complex experience <laughs> that you've had uh, with working in, in, in Georgia in quite tough period of time, let us be honest, uh, uh, all, all this geopolitical shifts and, and, and Georgia being uh, in the middle of it, whether it wants it or, or not. Um, uh, basically, so what would be one advice uh, um, to, the, um, to the ambassador who will be coming to, to Georgia? Well, Elena, this has really been a wonderful experience. Georgia is a fascinating country even if you're just looking at the past, but looking at where Georgia is now and the opportunities that are opening up and the determination of the Georgian people to have that European future that you've been building for, for in some ways, centuries, uh, I think is very exciting. And I've been, um, it's been the highlight of my time here to visit Georgians all over the country and feel that energy, feel their commitment to carrying their country forward to a European future. Um, the initiatives, the creativity, um, but really just that determination, that sense of determination that you are going to accomplish, achieve this goal of a secure, prosperous, democratic Georgia that is integrated into the European family of nations. I. I, I'm just so optimistic for the country's future. And the United States is going to be there with you, just as we have for the last 30 years. In, for the next years to come, as you, as you take these important steps, we know these are difficult reforms, these are difficult processes and procedures, uh, and we want to do everything we can to continue to support you, because we want to see Georgia succeed. That will be the best gift that we could ever receive. Thank you. Uh, this might be the best end of this interview, but as I told you, <laughs> I still have okay, one sure. question. I will merge it. Uh, my Ambassador, uh, it's definitely the final interview of Ambassador Dagnan in Georgia with us. Uh, I want to ask you about the biggest fail and the biggest achievement while your ambassadorship here. And at the same time, I want to uh, speak up about the new ambassador to Georgia also. So that's definitely the final question. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I am sorry that um, I didn't see more of a reduction in the polarization. I, 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 I was hopeful at different points in the time that I've been here where especially the political leadership did seem like they were overcoming their um, differences in order to be able to at least work together in parliament. Um, this, this reflex of boycotting parliament for one reason or another, I, I hope that Georgia gets past that because the parliament is designed to bring together um, parties with different viewpoints. It's not designed to all have one the same view of things. It's the place where 
the different voices of Georgia come together and debate the issues and decide and agree on what's in the best interests of the country as a whole. Uh, so I guess I, I'm, I'm disappointed that there is still the level of um, polarization here and uh, maybe I'll, um, that some of the mechanisms that Georgia has built over the years are not yet being fully utilized. Um, in terms of successes, I, again, I, as my personal success, I would just say that feeling that this country cannot be stopped because the people of Georgia so clearly know and are so determined to achieve the goals that they have set for this country of being a secure, prosperous democracy in Europe. And that I'm going to be watching Georgia, of course, with great um, enthusiasm uh, as, as you make those steps forward and that progress continues. And I know that the United States will be there, whether it's me or the next ambassador, um, supporting your efforts all the, all the way. Um, and the, um, Ambassador Designate Dunnigan is uh, one of our finest diplomats. She's very experienced. She has a, a lot of experience in the energy sector, which I think will be great for um, continuing our uh, partnership with Georgia on developing renewables, improving energy efficiency, and also reducing Georgia's dependence on Russia, R reducing Georgia's uh, dependence on Russia for energy. Um, so uh, I think you're getting one of our best. And I hope, I know she is going to have uh, a wonderful time here, just as I have. Your favorite, your favorite content, energy independence. So, new ambassador is going to be your favorite. Yes, my favorite. Respondent. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. The checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma to serve those who need it most.